The second day of the world final weekend for Brisker Formula 2 stock cars here at sunny Skegness Stadium on the east coast of England sees another large entry of Brisker F2s here to do battle once again. Drivers from England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, the Netherlands and Belgium are here for another great show of stock car racing. Chris Burgoyne still celebrating after his world championship win last night. Three heats today for the Formula 2s with a Constellation Final and Grand National coming up in the second part of our programme. A very busy programme for this large field of Brisker F2s. First of all, though, we'll take a look back at Saturday night and review the 2021 Championship of the World. The fireworks herald the race into life. All the tension reaches its climax here at Skegness Raceway. It's time for the Championship of the World. 35 cars, 25 laps, let's get ready to rumble. Here we go with the World Final. Good start by Billy Webster from pole position, coming through on the inside. Chris Burgoyne up into second place ahead of Andrew Palmer. Are oh, they all going to make it round the first turn? Somebody a bit slow away at the back, but I think they've all made it round the first turn. Mickey Brennan were on board with these sideways. He's lost it. Brennan, the former world champion, has gone. A couple more cars go spinning off behind him, on board with Gordon Moody, he clips Martin Ford there, number four as he spins out, but Moody's got through the middle, a couple of cars off on the outside, I think Jack Aldridge, 921, was involved in that as well, Andrew Palmer delayed slightly in the 606, it's Billy Webster who's held his lead from pole position, ahead of Wim Peters, the Dutchman up into second place in H124, Henry King, number 78, I think he must have been delayed, he's a lap down, having rejoined, it's Chris Burgoyne in third place for Scotland in the 647 car. We've lost a couple of runners already. Most of them surviving the first lap carnage. Reese Cox goes through there in 149. Gordon Moody's already made up a load of places in the early laps from 35th and last on the grids. A couple of cars stuck there on the inside line. Martin Ford and Jack Aldridge. But we didn't see the usual mass pileup that we see at the start of World Finals over the last few years. Billy Webster able to uh, hold his lead, but not for much longer. Oh, brilliant from Chris Burgoyne. He fires uh, Wim Peters and uh, Billy Webster into a back marker there and takes the lead. That was an excellent bit of driving by Chris Burgoyne in 6-4-7, and he leads the World Final. Wim Peters on his tail. And they're starting already to break away. They're into backmarker traffic. Henry King, who was slow away. We've got yellow flags. The yellow is out. We'll uh, wait and see why in a second. Chris Burgoyne has the lead on lap seven of the world final. A couple of cars pulling to the centre, and it's the backmarker that got fired in there. We'll see again this incredible move to take the lead. Watch Burgoyne. He picks up Peters, puts him into Webster. They go into the back of uh, Johan Schouten, the Dutchman. He gets walloped straight in, and Chris Burgoyne goes from third to first in one move. That was a brilliant piece of driving. Now, can he hold it? With Peters, he's a two-time world champion in Brisker F2. Dave Polly up there in third. He's a former national points champion. Also in there, we've got Sir Graham Fegan. We're on board with Luke Wrench in the 560, the silver top. Egan ahead of us, the Northern Irishman. He's won the European title, among other things, in the past. He dearly wants a world final victory. We're not even uh, close to halfway yet in this championship of the world here at Skegness. Chris Burgoyne leads for Scotland. Here we go, we're back underway. Burgoyne gets his boot down, down the home straight, leads them off. He's won the world final before. That was way back in 2002 on his home track of Cowden Beef. Away they go, bouncing off the wall there. That was uh, Rob Mitchell getting involved with, uh, I think that was Brad McKinstry, the Northern Irishman. There's Gordon Moody, and he was delayed as a result of that in his charge up from the back. Billy Webster battling with Dave Polly for third place. Behind them is Luke Wrench. He's got ahead of Graham Fegan, and wallop, in goes the bumper. I think that was Fegan getting the bumper in on uh, Wrench. Yes, he's got through ahead of uh, Webster now, and he's having a go at Polly. Wallop straight in goes the 38. Graham Fegan, I think he's trying to win this as last car running. He's smashing everybody out of his way. This is brilliant stuff from the Northern Irishman. Here comes Ben Lockwood in the 618, getting into the mix now as well. He's come from uh, quite a way back down the order. Three wide there, ahead of Gordon Moody. He makes up another three place. I think Stevie Burgoyne was uh, one of those in there. Now he's up with the leading pack. Somebody goes spinning out there. I think that was Lockwood in 618. Graham Fegan now battling with Gordon Moody. 
Well, Graham Fegan's going to have a go at the uh, world champion now. Jack Cave in 8.01 gets drawn on the inside, but Moody will surely have a go back at uh, Graham Fegan here. Fegan's too busy having to go at Jack Cave. He's going to take himself like Graham Fegan. He's trying to take everybody else out of this race. I think he's smashing everybody out towards the wall. Oh, this is fantastic stuff. Ray Wallace and Rob Speak in this battle as well. Mickey Brennan recovering. He's spun on the opening lap. Has a go at the 890 car there of Paul Rice. Ray Wallace ahead now in number 16. The former British champion, but still your leader at halfway is Chris Burgoyne for Scotland. Burgoyne leads it. Can he take his second world title 19 years after the first one? Wim Peters still in second place for the Netherlands. Burgoyne coming up to lap number 13 of Andy Ford. An earlier shale racer. This is absolutely frantic. Ten laps to go in this world final. Luke Wrench gets the bumper in on Billy Webster, trying to move into the top three. Can he catch our leaders? The 560 car, he'd dearly love to make it silver and gold. Gordon Moody a little further down the order. He's come through very nicely from the back. It may be a too tall an order for him to take another world title from here, though. He's starting to run out of laps now. 3-2-4 of uh, Jordan Thakra battling with Mickey Brennan. He gets uh, some bumper there from the former double world champion in 968. Thakra slowing, looks like he's out of it. This man isn't. Chris Burgoyne needs to keep a cool head now. Needs to be careful with these back markers. Paul Rice ahead of him there. And Harley Thakra as well, Jordan's brother. Wim Peters could be coming in for an attack here as uh, Burgoyne's mired in back marker traffic. This could be crucial. Wim Peters is ready to attack. Here he goes into the turn there. He gets the bumper in. Oh, he's got himself caught up. He goes sideways. And that could be the decisive move because Peters has dropped back about three car lengths or so from Burgoyne as a result of the loss of momentum there. And that could give Chris Burgoyne the break he needed. Chris Burgoyne a few years ago thought his career could be over due to a back injury, but he came back and on his return won the British Championship at Milton Hall. He's been European champion as well world title back in 2002 when he was the youngest ever Brisker F2 world champion there is Luke Wrench into the top three now but it is still Chris Burgoyne from Wim Peters I don't think Peters is going to get close enough here for another attack he had his chance when Burgoyne was caught in back marker traffic but he got himself sideways there's the battle between Gordon Moody and Jack Cave gets uh, 149 of Reese Cox out of the way there so Gordon can make more progress up the order he's going to run out of laps to challenge for another world title the gold looks like it is going to stay north of the border though I don't think Chris Burgoyne is going to be caught now what a story after he thought a few years ago his career was over he's won the European title he's won the British title as well all his family have raced stock cars in Scotland over the years. And incredibly, 19 years after his first world title on home tarmac at Cowdenbeath, he's back on top of the world. Chris Burgoyne is world champion 2021. Burgoyne takes it. Wim Peters comes over in second. Scotland the Brave here at Skegness Raceway. It's a second world championship. 19 years after the first for Chris Burgoyne. Gordon Moody made it into the top 10 from the very back of the grid. Couldn't quite retain his world title, but a great charge through the field nonetheless. But the title stays in Scotland in the hands of Chris McGoyne. A magnificent drive from the 647, and now he will cut loose in celebration. Donuts from Chris McGoyne on the start finish line. Confirm the full results of the world final shortly. Chris Burgoyne then, world champion for the second time in his career in a three-nation top three ahead of Wim Peters and Luke Wrench. Billy Webster, the pole sitter home next ahead of Bradley McKinstry. He got fastest lap. Gordon Moody from the back of the grid, then Jack Cave, Jan Becker, Stevie Burgoyne and Graham Fegan completing the top ten. So congratulations to Chris Burgoyne. Now it's on to Sunday's race action. 26 cars out for the first of three heats. Lineup including former world champion Kelvin Marshall. Good to see him back out. The European champion 183 Charlie Ginchard is out there as well. Huge field of Formula 2s for a huge crowd in attendance here this weekend. We go on board with Liam Rennie in uh, car number three. The uh, 
Scottish star for this one in among the red tops as here we go for heat number one over 16 laps green flags wave and the battle begins 1975 there Graham Leckie under fire from the 239 car in the early stages the white Raiders fighting it out among themselves it is number 931 Rebecca Smith the younger of the two sisters racing here this weekend we believe that's the first time two sisters have raced together in uh, Bristol F2 she leads the way as Liam Rennie already getting involved in the battle further back in the order there's 101 Kelvin Marshall good to see him back out after some time away getting taken wide so in there Harley Thakra in the number nine car battle already joined among the lower graders at the front of the field Liam Rennie working the wheel there as he comes off the turn loses out to the European champion gets walloped into the back of him there Liam Rennie's going in wallop straight in we go that's the end of Liam Rennie's race didn't quite see who uh, put the bumper in there Harley Thacker getting carried sideways down the straight there of early chaos uh, as expected in this brisker F2 heat number one Rebecca Smith 9-3-1 leads the way lapping Daniel Scrimger in the 2-3-6 so he must have been involved there in one of those tangles early on he's having a go at our uh, race leader here and Rebecca Smith slowly in her teens leads the way under fire here from 142 Jonathan Hadfield he comes through on the inside to take it up Jonathan Hadfield who had a heat and final double in uh, last night's meeting winning the Alan Benson Memorial Trophy and he's got the lead now ahead of Smith in second place wait to see who comes through next in the order there's 96 Jan Beckers the Belgian driver he is a cosmopolitan field here this weekend 618 Ben Lockwood is uh, in behind him Charlie Ginchard has come to a stop in 183 as well he was involved in uh, that tangle with Liam Rennie I think and Becker's running well closing up on Emma Mellis the uh, Scottish lady racer in 621 see uh, a number of ladies coming into Brisker F2 in the last few years We've seen Jess Ward take a few wins on our coverage Emma Mellis getting bumpered wide there Courtney Finnegan as well and now the Smith sisters Jessica and Rebecca there's 297 veteran campaigner Paul Bailey his son Tim also racing today in 817 it's still Jonathan Hadfield 142 who has the lead there's Liam Rennie's car in the background but suspension broken when he got walloped straight in earlier on Coming into the closing stages now, Brisker F2, heat number one. It's looking good for another win this weekend for John Hadfield. Lapping the 2-3-9 car there. Graham Leckie being sent wide there in 9-7-5, the white grader. A few uh, lively hits in the early stages, but things uh, quietening down in the last few laps of heat number one. For the F2s, the leading runners, of course, go through the final. There's Brad McKinstry, number 747, the Northern Irishman. He got the fastest lap in the world final last night. Battling Jan Beckers in the 96. A couple of laps to go now for Jonathan Hatfield. He is heading for victory. A steady start to the day for the Brisker Formula 2s. In front of this very large crowd here in the Skegness sunshine. Yes, it doesn't always rain here at Skegness. Here they come then around the final lap this time. Don't have field well clear of his opposition. Comes through turns three and four for the last time. It's another win for John Hadfield, but a cracking weekend he is having. Firm who was second and third in a few moments' time. Rebecca Smith was in there among the leading runners, going well in uh, only a few meetings into her F2 career, it has to be said, but. Uh, John Hadfield can't stop winning this weekend. A heat and final double last night. He wins heat one today. Just under a second clear of Adam Rubery, number 700 in second. Then Ayrton Mills third ahead of Rebecca Smith. Harley Burns rounding out the top five ahead of Jamie Jones. Then Kelvin Marshall, Jordan Thackra, Steve Gilbert and Ben Lockwood completing the top ten. Heat one winner, one for two, Jonathan Hadfield. Same result, different day. Yeah, more than happy with that. Hopefully do the same in the final as well. Yeah, you certainly, your car's dialed in round here, it's, it's got the speed, it's handling beautiful, I mean, there isn't much to stop here, is there? Uh, I've got a car with a bit of a back marker, then what let Adam Rubri get a bit closer than what I wanted to, uh, but no, the car's pretty good, my mate's got it quite good, my mum and dad bought the best we can get this year, and hopefully come back bigger and better next year, better stuff again.
Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're starting from yellow at the minute. You're already going to go to blue because of the final win, but I don't think you're stopping at blue. No, um, my intention is next year is to get up to red and be out the back with all the big boys. Well, you've got a final to come. We said it last night. You could do it in the final. You could certainly do it again today. That's my intention. You've got to start off back yellow again. Hopefully I get the same sort of start as I did last night. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Heat number two on track then. 23 cars out there this time. The entry including the second of the Smith sisters, Jessica. She's going from yellow grade. 890 Paul Rice there alongside 16 Craig Wallace. One of quite a few Scots out in this race. Matt Stoneman in 127 will be one to watch. Also the former world champion, 783 James Rigor, just some, some of the names to look out for here. 674 Stevie Burgoyne as well, the younger brother of the new world champion, Chris. We're underway then with heats uh, number two. Also out there, 419 Ryan Farquhar and 689 Joe Marquand. That's the first time I've ever seen two drivers with the letter Q in their name out in the same race. We're underway then. Start to sort themselves out. 881 Jamie Ward Scott is your early pace setter up front. Ready bumpers going in. 210 Tristan Clayton attacking the 578 there of Mark Gibbs. Unusual to see Mark Gibbs down at yellow. He's been a blue and red top for the last few years. Make the most of that and pull some points in. Now split by the 287 car there, that's Luke Beeson. There is 881, Jamie Ward Scott, your early race leader. Instrumental in the organisation of the uh, Risk Ref 2 E Series online last year during lockdown. 16 Craig Wallace coming through, and Mark Gibbs has been spun out there, facing the wrong way. Craig Wallace, the former British champion, avoids him around the outside. There's James Ryger, number 783, Ryger the Tiger, as some call him won the world final a few years ago down at Taunton when four drivers led the race on the final lap. 57 there in trouble, that's Scott Bodily, the former Modstocks racer. 881 leads the way, Jamie Ward Scott, he's gone wide there, coming out of turn two, and that's one of the Seneschal family moving through on the inside. That's Darren Seneschal, 376. Three members of the family racing here this weekend. Also in there, 175, that is, that's uh, Stephen Wright from uh, Northern Ireland sort themselves out behind, three wide there through turns one and two, Rigor attacking 689, that's Joe Mark one, ahead of them is Paul Rice, number 890, it's Daz Seneschal who leads the way, right under fire from 564, that's David Shearing, oh, Richard Shearing used to race Risker F2 as well, David began his career in the ORCI mini stocks, and he's now up into second, he's going to try and attack the four of the lead here, he just gets a little flick in with the bumper, good driving David Shearing, and he takes the lead, just on half distance. It's the blue grader who leads the way then. Stephen Wright, I think he's in third place. He may be a lap down. Back on board with Craig Wallace. There's our early leader, Jamie Ward Scott, on the outside. Jessica Smith ahead of us in 390. Wallace goes through. Smith sisters, of course, the uh, daughters of Anthony Smith, the uh, multiple Brisker F1 world champion and granddaughters of the legendary. Stuart Smith Sr., arguably the greatest stock car racer of all time. Jamie Ward Scott under fire from Paul Rice. Justin Clayton under fire from Craig Wallace. They go past Andy Bentley, the ex Rebels racer in 939. Lying in with the bumper. 127, Matt Stoneman, the Devonshire driver, on the attack. Have a go at Craig Wallace in the turn one. They get past Tristan Clayton, the ex-saloon stock car driver in 210. It's looking good up front for David Shearing, the blue grader. The closing stage is now a Brisker F2. Heat number two. Stoneman moving up to attack Craig Wallace. This is a little further down the top ten. to catch race leader David Shearing. It's going to be a win for the Blue Grader. Seneschal still there in second. I think it's right in uh, third place. We've lost somebody there on the inside of turn three. We're on the last lap now. 5.64 of David Shearing. He's not going to be caught. Round turns three and four. Comes the East Anglian base driver to take the chequered flag. Shearing wins it. To confirm who was second, I think it was Seneschal in second, and possibly Stephen Wright in third, but he may be a lap down. We'll confirm that in just a moment. No doubt about your winner, though, 
564 of David Shearing. We'll be looking at a red roof soon with form like this. Darren Seneschal did take uh, second place, and it was Matt Stoneman third. Right was a lap down, so Stoneman third ahead of Craig Wallace. And Tristan Clayton, James Ryger defeating Paul Rice for six, then Jessica Smith, Ryan Farquhar, and Joe Marquand, the two Qs, completing the top ten. Heat two winner, five, six, six four, David Shearing, and that was quite some impressive drive. Well, I wouldn't say that much. <laughs> you were you were away. You, you're from Blue. It's it's not easy today. I mean, there's still plenty of cars left over from the World Final last night as well, and you've some good company out there. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's on the pace. That's trouble now, but got the break from the front of Blues, got through the yellows, and then it was just that one fast white top managed to get them. So happy with that. Yeah, it looked like for a while, like it, they were just going to stay in the lead and nobody was going to get to them, but then you just all caught them up at once. Yeah, halfway through, my car came on a little a little bit more than it was, so got to get move on and then caught them, passed them, and stayed clear of everyone else, unlike last night. And of course, it's going to be a busy final today as well. You get a break in that, you've always got a chance, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. Even halfway through, even if you're near the back, you've still got a chance because it is anybody's race in the final when you've got 36 cars out there, so it could be anyone's. And of course, we've got nice weather conditions today as well, which helps, doesn't it? I don't know. I think it's a bit too warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck in the final. Lovely. Thank you. Heat number three on track then. The world champion Chris Burgoyne is out there for this one in car number 647. So look out for the pole sitter from the world final last night. 226, Billy Webster, John Palmer. Number 24 as well, always a lively figure. Mr. Box Office, as he's known. Northern Ireland star Graham Fegan in uh, 998 is one to watch as well. He was hitting everything in sight in last night's meeting there. He is at the back of the red tops as we get underway with heat number three. Another 16 laps coming your way. We're on board with the world champion Chris Burgoyne. There's John Palmer ahead of us in the 24, side by side down the home straight. Now, Chris Burgoyne would dearly love to win his first race with his new gold roof, world champion back in 2002. Just 20 years later on, he wins the gold again. 544 Will Adams takes the lead away from uh, Dale Seneschal Jr. 161 Ben Bates, the man from Birmingham, getting the bumper in as well. Future of his local track uncertain at the moment. Birmingham Wheels Raceway. Chris Burgoyne attacking Henry King, number. 78 gets passed in. There's a bit of a tangle there on the outside. Somebody going backwards down the uh, Armco on the back straight. That was one of the yellow tops. And Chris Burgoyne's been shuffled back there through turns three and four. Got pushed out wide, I think, by John Palmer. Getting lively in among the uh, red and superstar graders here. There's Graham Fegan in the middle of it. That car stuck there facing the wrong way. It's one of the yellow tops. I think we're going to go caution as a result of that and work out uh, who that is over there. Tim Bailey, number 817, has pulled onto the centre. I think that's the 280 car of Alan Watt that is uh, facing the wrong way there. Plenty of push and shove there as they came out of turn two. The 402 car hits the uh, wall. And there is the 280 of Alan Watt facing the wrong way. So Mika Miller was also involved there in 402. Of mayhem early on in this heat set number three. Will Adams, number 544, has the lead ahead of Ben Bates in 161 as we get back underway. Dale Seneschal Jr. is there, the bumper's going in there, and wallop straight in goes the 379. That was uh, 584 Charlie Sign putting the bumper in. Dale Moon's in there as well in 302. Had a consolation win uh, on world final nights last night. 905 Rob Mitchell getting involved as well. Battle is well and truly on for second place. But I think we've got uh, yellow flags again. Yes, the field slows. And Dale Seneschal uh, in the wall. Exactly the same place as Alan Watts was in the wall on the previous start. See what happened again there. Charlie Symes launched in with the bumper. Dale Seneschal into the back of Ben Bates and then walloped straight into the wall. That's the end of Dale Seneschal Jr.'s race. Dale Jr., famous name in stock car racing, of course. No Earnhardt's here, though. 544 Will Adams has the lead. Chris Burgoyne makes a rather flying restart there into the back of Billy Webster in the 2-2-6. Puts him into the back of Mickey Brennan, the former world champion in 9-6-8. Chris Burgoyne is not hanging about here. His next target's fellow Scotsman Ewan Miller in the 6-2-9. 6-1 Ben Bates attacking our race leader. Ben Bates, a champion mini stocks racer in his youth on the Midlands Ovals but he loses out there to Dale Moon number 302 
comes through on the inside at turns three and four. Now it's down to the business of trying to catch Will Adams. Here's the battle a little further behind. John Palmer in there, Tommy Farrell, 667. Chris Burgoyne we ride with. It's through up the inside there, attacks Farrell, goes through. His next target is Mr Box Office himself, 24, John Palmer. Mix order in the F2s who originally carried that name and uh, Tommy Farrell gets uh, walloped straight in in 667. That's the end of his race by the look of things. Somebody else getting spun out there. I think that's Ewan Miller that's gone around in the middle of that uh, battle into turn three. They're really going for it here in the midfield. There's Aaron Vate, 184, under fire from Charlie Syme. Will Adams is under fire now for the lead of the race from Dale Moon, looking for his second win of the weekend. He took uh, the first of the consolation races, the uh, entry so big for the world final. Two consolations were needed. 302, Dale Moon gets the bumper in on 544. Will Adams is up the inside and goes through. Moon Raider leads the way then, and now Ben Bate will try for second in the 161. Behind them is the fight between Palmer, Mitchell and Chris Burgoyne. A couple of cars in the wall on turn four there as Ben Bate goes through into second place. Here comes John Palmer. So leading the national points coming into world final weekend. It's Ben Bate wide, here comes Burgoyne. Mapping 738 of Joe Woods there, gets out of the way on the outside, perhaps wisely because there's bumpers flying in everywhere. Boyne ready to attack the 24 of Palmer. A couple of laps to go now. Ride with Burgoyne, just gets the bumper in there on the turn. On the inside, Palmer very quick in a straight line. You can see him matching Burgoyne for pace there as they go into turn three. It's going to be a win by the look of it for Dale Moon because this fight for second means they're not going to catch him. Here comes Palmer, ready to attack into the final turn. The bumper goes in, he sends Burgoyne out wide, up the inside, they're side by side. Palmer up the inside on the runs of the line, and he signals to Chris Burgoyne there as they cross the line. Not sure what that was all about, but the win had already gone to Dale Moon. He was out in front in 3.02, he's won it. Palmer wins the battle for second with Burgoyne. Two wins this weekend for 3.02, Dale Moon then. Won a consolation last night, now a heat winner today. Moon the winner ahead of Palmer by two seconds and Palmer just beating Burgoyne in their battle for second place. Mitchell next ahead of Billy Webster, Ben Bates falling to sixth ahead of Henry King, then early leader Will Adams, Dan Fallows in 581, Kieran Bradford in 10. 3 or 2 Dale Moon, you're having a good weekend, aren't you? Yeah, it's turning out all right. After it started off a bit poor in the first heat, um, yeah, it seemed to be dialed in a bit now. And the race has been fast and furious as well, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And of course, we've said this to nearly everybody today, there's a Fast and Furious final coming up as well. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. Well, we wish you the best of luck in that. Let's see what happens. Thank you very much. Well, one or two teams with a few repairs to do ahead of the final and Grand National later on. Some to go in the Constellation as well. That's all coming up after a short break. So maybe grab yourself something to eat and we'll be back in a few minutes' time.